Thank you so much, Roshi. I'm sure everybody must be loving it. From Odisha, now let's move to Bihar. Maithali is among the sweetest languages spoken in both India and in Nepal. It is the language of Devi Sita, who is also known as Maithili, originating from Mithila, the ancient kingdom his father Raja Janak ruled. Maithali is still the most common dialect of Madhubani, Siraha, Darbanga, and Janakpur in Nepal. Mithila was the place where Sri Ram came with his brothers to attend the Sayamvar of Devi Sita. This was the place where they got married. Every spring, the people of Mithila still celebrates their wedding during Ram Navami. Let's hear it from Chanda, a lovely recitation of how Mithila welcomes Sri Ram, their Pahun, the guest to the wedding. By the way, Chanda, did anybody tell you that your sari is beautiful? what we were wondering. Mithila Raghari Ali Hai 
Thank you so much, Chanda. Wasn't that very sweet to the ears? Young Tagore was so much in love with the sweetness of the language that he composed Bhanu Shinger Podabali in Brajabuli. It describes an emotional interplay of divinity and submission expressed through the love between Radha and Krishna. A very interesting narration of love sweetened by the Maithali dialect. Without any further ado, let's call upon stage a very talented singer, Rupsha. I am sure you will love listening to her.
That was mesmerizing, Rupsha. I'm hoping everyone is loving it. From Mithila, let's go to the northeastern part of India, to Manipur, another abode for both Sri Radha and Krishna. Manipur has a deep connection to Bengal through none other than Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. He was one of the greatest patrons of the Manipuri dance and culture. Our next performance will be from Noel, who will perform a beautiful Manipuri dance with a Rabindra Shangit celebrating Boshanto or spring. Noel, the stage is all yours. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. 
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. While we are in the Northeast, let's move to the shores of Bhamraputra to the tea gardens of Assam. Assam is famous for its indigenous folk music like Bihu, Bhavaya, and other low geets, accompanied by folk instruments like dhols, kapas, pepas, tokas, and sutulis. Let's invite on stage Munmun, who will present to us two beautiful Assamese songs. Welcome, Moon Moon.
That was magical. Thank you, Mulmun. How are you liking it? Thank you. So while we are in this trance, let's take a flight from the northeast across the Gangetic Plains of India to Delhi. Dilwalo ki Delhi, Amir Khusru's Delhi. We will hear today a musical rendition of one of his poems that he wrote in celebration of spring. Legend has it that Amir Khusru composed this poem at the onset of spring. One day, on his way to Delhi, he saw a group of women wearing yellow flowers and singing and dancing as they went to worship their god. Khusru was a disciple of famous saint Hazrat Nizamuddin Aliya. In those days, the Hazrat was mourning the death of his nephew. So Amir Khusru decided to write a poem to cheer up the Hazrat. Khusru, dressed up in yellow flowers and drapes, went singing and dancing to the Hazrat, who was so amused to see him that he also broke into a smile and joined the celebrations. It is said that the Chisti Sufis from that day onwards started celebrating Vasant. 
let's welcome on stage Shreya Sinha. Let's hear from her, Sakalabana.
what a beautiful song. Such lovely poetry. Thank you, Shreya. From Delhi, let's come back to Bengal. Shonar Bangla is not only fertile in terms of her harvest, but also for the variety of mesmerizing folk music she has gifted to us since time immemorial. An evening is never enough to cover such variety in all the forms. But let's savor some taste of Bengali folk. Here we have a song composed by someone more contemporary. It is a beautiful song about love composed by the very talented Sahana Bajpai, inspired from a Siliti song by the very famous Shah Abdul Karim. Riddhi Barman, let's hear it from you. <laughs> 